first, I want to greet everyone. Good afternoon, and I hope you're all doing great. Uh, we are very happy that you're joining us today. So I am warmly uh, welcoming you in Global Sign webinar, we'll, where we will be discussing about SMIME certificate, a scalable email security solution. I am your speaker today. My name is Diodi Aranza from Sales Team. I've been helping IT managers, CISOs, and CTOs find the right solution for their emerging information security concerns. And one of the most pressing issues which they have is email security. Along with me is my colleague Deepa Kyadav, a sales engineer and an expert in PKI who has countless experience of deploying PKI solution. Good afternoon. Now to begin with, I would like to have a quick introduction regarding Global Sign in our core business, right? Global Sign is part of Gemo Internet Group, a leading internet company and listed in, in Tokyo Stock Exchange. Our holding company has more than 100 group of companies from online advertising and media, internet infrastructure, internet financial services, crypto assets, and more. As for Global Sign, we are a certificate authority and the leading provider of digital certificates and security solutions for more than 20 years now. We are currently operating globally, so it includes offices in UK, US, Singapore, India, and UAE. Global Science core business is public infrastructure, or best known as PKI where we provide digital certificates to secure online communications. Our high-scale PKI and identity solutions support the billions of services, devices, people, and things compromising the Internet of Everything. We have also multiple accreditations from international and regulating bodies, such as WebTrust, CA Browser, EIDAS for providing trust services, and as well as Adobe Approved Trust List and Cloud Signature Consortium. Now, let me run you through the Global Science Enterprise solution, right? So as for Global Sign, we inherently provide PKI digital certificates, like for example, SSL certificate or TLS for website security. We also have secure email or SMIME for protecting emails. We have code signing for application and soft software security and digital signatures for document signing solution. In addition, we provide different enterprise solution for management and automation. We have managed PKI platform where all the digital certificates can easily be managed. And lastly, under IoT and CA services, we provide custom CA for both hosted and private CA requirement. Now guests, that is just a high level information about Global Sign Solution. In this webinar, we will be focusing on the growing risks of using email. Explore how digitally signing and encrypting emails can help mitigate them. Explain why you should digitally sign and encrypt your emails and offer considerations to help you choose the right email security solution for your company. Now that sounds interesting, right? Also, we will be accommodating questions from our attendees. So please feel free to leave a message on the chat box so that we can address it later on. Now, I think we're ready to begin. Deepak, I have one question. Can you imagine doing business without any email? Thank you, Judy, for giving the brief introduction. And yes, I can't imagine or uh, any organization will not imagine the business without emails in today's scenario. Today, email is the most convenient way of communication and it is used to send sensitive information. If I talk about stats, then approximately 330 billion emails are sent every day which works out at, at well over 3.5 million emails per second. So that justifies how important or how critical emails are in today's scenario. When we talk about emails, it comes with a lot of challenges. Cyber threat actors and threat groups 
are continuously researching and testing out new tactics, techniques and procedures in an attempt to overcome and exploit this increasingly in a sophisticated and in a complicated way. If I talk about the risk that we have uh, uh, mentioned here, so the very first risk we have as data leak. Now, perhaps email is too convenient for everyone and it is too easy to send sensitive information to someone. Now, when it is too easy and we are sharing sensitive information, it is susceptible to falling into wrong hands. And once it is done, we all know the consequences. Then the second one we have as phishing, and it is the most popular attack over the emails these days. In this type of uh, uh, attack, the threat actor will try to uh, will try to attain confidential information like passwords, and they do it very easily. They try to forge the sender's address, which is called spoofing, and it is the one of the most popular way of carrying phishing attack. It is very easy in today's scenario to identify the designation of an individual by using a simple platform LinkedIn that everyone has access to. So these threat actors do a proper research, try to identify the colleagues, and then they impersonate them as their colleague. Then the third one we have is man in middle attack, which is again the same thing where the attacker is trying to insert himself between two parties, that is the sender and receiver, and pretend to be one of the party. Then we have eavesdropping. That is, a, uh, that is the kind of uh, risk in which a user is trying to do the data packet capture on the email uh, data packet. So once they do the data packet capture and they view the content of the email, they capture your message, read it, and thus the sensitive information is lost. Then we have data diddling attack, and this is the most uh, uh, difficult attack, or this is the most, uh, uh, I would say, risky attack. Right. In this case, what person tries to do is they again do the data packet capture and tries to tamper with the content of the email. And we all have seen such challenges in the recent past. Then last but not the least, we have viruses and spam. Now we all know that we have received, each one of us must have received phishing emails or the emails which has malicious link in it. Once you click on these emails, once you click on these links, the whole thing is done. The viruses get attracted to your network and they will replicate themselves over the network. We all have heard of uh, ransomware attacks. We all have heard of petty and non petty attacks. So that becomes a very big challenge and it is all done with the help of emails where we are send, uh, sending or sharing our most sensitive and repeated data. I agree with you, Deepak. Now, you know, it, it's no surprise that our email is the, uh, like, you know, one of the most targeted areas of cyber attack, right? So you've just showed us, like, the, the N number of risk, why, uh, I mean, the N number of risk associated on emails, right? And it has been very alarming for the past few years now. I know everyone is well aware of, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, where we are forced to adopt work from home patterns. Policy, right? And in fact, I just wanted to share one survey, right? It has been recorded that in the year 2020, more than 22% of the data breaches in the world is due to email compromise. So that's a huge percentage and that's a huge number. Now, shall we take a look at some of the biggest phishing scams of all time, Deepak? Yeah, certainly, Diodi. Let's try to take a few examples. So as Diodi just mentioned, that we will take a few examples of biggest phishing attacks or scams of all types. As you can see on the screen, we have a few examples here, starting with Sony Pictures, and then we have Google and Facebook. So as we were talking about phishing, in phishing what, try, what people are trying to do, or what hackers are trying to do, they try to impersonate themselves as your colleagues and try to send you the emails, right? This is again very easy, as it is shown in Sony Pictures case, that after researching the employee's name and title on LinkedIn, the hacker tried to pose themselves as uh, their company colleagues. Once they tried to pose themselves as company colleagues, they were able to retrieve a lot of information from Sony Pictures. That was including newly released files, financial record, and customer data. And just imagine when customer data is involved and it is breached, it attracts GDPR fines that might cost you more than 100 million USD 
and that was the same case with Sony Pictures. They have lost more than 100 TB of data and that was including the financial records, new re released files that actually hampered their uh, new releases. Talking about Google and Facebook. Now we all know Google and Facebook. They are the big giants and they have all the infrastructure. They have all the security that is eventually needed. But they also fall prey to these phishing attacks. And in this case, the hacker was smart enough. What he or she tried to do is they try to evaluate the way how the invoices are generated for Google. They try to ev uh, evaluate what all services they are consuming and they did phishing attack on the name of their vendors. So they continuously send out invoices to Google and Facebook and they were again uh, able to retrieve more than 100 million USD during 2013 and 15. Now think of the sensitivity of this issue that the hacker was able to repeatedly do these attacks between last three years, that is in between 2013 and 15. So they were repeatedly doing it and getting the data. We all know Google and Facebook have the most secure environment in the world. But again, when you are unable to authenticate the person, when you are unable to authenticate the sender, no matter how well you have maintained your email infrastructure or the IT infrastructure, you are always susceptible to fall prey to such incidences. Now, these Sony Picture and Google Facebook are clear case of phishing attacks that we see on the screen. It's uh, thank you, Deepak, for citing those um, cases as well. I would want to add two incidents that had also happened, all right, which is related for some phishing emails. So we have Ukrainian power grid attack. The incident happened on December of 2015, where their employees received phishing emails containing malware, which led to the power grid blackout all right that's that's a very big issue for them and as well as we have colonial pipeline where they were where they were attacked with ransomware in may 2021 which led to the company's four main pipeline to be shut down that cost them a loss of five million usd so just to sum it up no small or big enterprises are safe from email exploit and an increase in the variety and volumes of attacks is inevitable given the desire of financially and criminally motivated actors to obtain personal and confidential information. Now, Deepak, again, I have a question. Do you think or do we have a solution to counterattack this kind of email threats? Yes, Judy, certainly. We have the solution that can help you identify the origin of the message that can help you identify whether the email is tampered or not, or that can actually help you identify if the message is authentic or not, right? If I talk about the recent examples that we talked about, if I talk about Sony, Google and Facebook, they were clear example of phishing attack where the recipient was unable to identify the sender. They were unable to authenticate the sender. They fall prey to the uh, way that this uh, hacker was trying to uh, maintain. They actually uh, treated or they actually believed that it is coming from the sender who he or she is claiming to be. So that was clear case where the sender was not authenticated well. With our SMIM certificate, we are addressing this challenge by proving you the message origin. When I say we are proving you the origin of message, we are doing it with the help of certificates. So we are issuing email signing certificate and these certificates are only issued once we have verified the individual as well as the organization. So this certificate has the name of the individual, email address of the individual along with the organization details. And this certificate is actually attached to the email when this user is sending email to someone. So when recipient receives the email, it has the email body as well as the signing certificate and the identity of the individual can be easily identified with the help of certificate. Now this gives, this gives us the liberty to visually help or to give a visual indication to the recipient who the email is coming from. The second thing, we help you prevent the tampering of the content. We just spoke about data diddling attack in which one hacker is trying to, is doing, is trying to do the data packet capture and once they have done it, they are tampering the content of the email. Say for example, one company is sending an invoice to another company for the services.
that you have consumed so and so services from us and you have to pay X amount to this particular account number. And that's the kind of email that generally travel that we share with our partners or with our vendors, right? In such case, if hacker is trying to do a man in middle attack, do the data packet capture, they will simply change the account number. When the email is received on recipient side, they will see that it is coming from the right person. The second thing they will see that yes, they have actually used these services that will again add more reality to the email and they will transfer the amount. Once the amount is transferred, it is lost because the account was tampered with. So we help you ensure that no one can tamper your emails once you are sending it. Then the third thing is we also ensure the confidentiality of the email that ensures that only the recipient can view the content of this email and no one else. Even if there is successful man in middle attack, no, can, no one can eavesdrop in your email. No, can, no one can view the sensitive content. And, and then we have SMIME is industry standard for public key encryption. Now when I talk about public key encryption or PKI, since Global Sign is the organization which is completely dependent on PKI for all the services. And I will assure you, I will assure all our attendees that each one of you is already using PKI in your infrastructure. Each one of you have the website for your organization and then there is a SSL certificate on your website which makes it HTTPS, that is HTTP secure. So you all are already using PKI and using the same technology, leveraging the same uh, advantages of PKI, we are providing you SMIME certificate to ensure you can digitally sign and encrypt the emails. Last but not the least, these certificates are supported by most of the email clients and it is extremely easy to use that we will demonstrate to you in the demo. Thank you, Deepak. So let me just summarize what we have discussed so far, Deepak, right? Um, basically, if I could summarize it, we have identified two root causes why users and organizations are susceptible in email attack. One is when hackers try to impersonate a supposedly legitimate organization or sender, the users are unable to recognize sophisticated phishing emails. The second one is that hackers can tamper emails and eavesdrop, right? Hence, it could potentially be able to steal verified information and personal information as well. That could lead to be further use of malicious actions. And with the use of our SMIME certificate, we provide email encryption so that only the intended recipient can decrypt or read email messages. And as well as we prove the origin and the identity of the sender to prevent users to clicking malicious ransomwares, links, and attachments. Is my understanding correct, Deepak? That is perfectly right, Yodi. So you have just summed it up in a very well way. So it's just about the identity compromise plus tampering of the email message that we are trying to uh, make sure that you will not fall prey to these things. Correct, understood. Thank you very much, Deepa. Now let's just add more highlight on why we need to secure our emails, right? We've mentioned that um, email is the number one platform for business communication and um, three, uh, 333.2 billion um, emails are, are always sent per day, right? So basically what kind of data or what kind of information do we usually exchange using emails? We have to think and remember that a lot of private and sensitive informations are being exchanged in email. Like for example, for our top management, they could be exchanging some corporate strategies. There could be um, exchanging some design plans. It could be like a pricing of the company. It could be a contract for a legal team. And in my personal experience as sales, I would usually ask my customers for their personal information, like a name, email address, or sometimes I would request for their um, bank organization details, right? And when we talk about healthcare industry, 
industries, TPAC, or, or um, and guest. Um, when we talk about healthcare industries, there are also a lot of um, exchanges, like for example, patient record or patient health information. And in accountant um, or in, in finance department, there's a lot of exchange in invoices. So all these data are subject for compromising, right, or, or, or subject um, to be potentially susceptible um, onto falling on a wrong hands. So that's basically what we're trying to protect here. All the data that is that are being exchanged in our day to day operations. So let's take um, an example wherein hackers are very successful because we have mentioned there are a lot of techniques, right? They can do all of it, right? So when they are successful, basically there are different consequences as well in organization. Like it could be a heavy fines, which we also cited earlier in Sony Pictures, um, Google, Facebook, and um, the, the other use cases, right? And also we can talk about their reputation. So all these companies or everyone everyone uh, right now that are doing business they usually spend time just to build a good reputation and we do not want that on a single night or just an overnight our reputation would be damaged and some of these organizations as well may be complying on some accreditations and we don't want our accreditations to be at risk so basically as mime certificate ensures that it would reduce a phishing attacks and as well as reduce spread of malware. That is right, Judy. And thank you for briefing the uh, challenges and the kind of sensitive information that we actually share on emails, right? So let's quickly discuss what digital signature and encryption is and how it can help you, right? We have repeatedly talked about message integrity that no one can tamper your email, right? That is one of the major concerns that we want to make sure that our emails are secure. Now, in case of message integrity, how we do it, right? So whenever we are signing the email, all of you must have heard of SHA algorithm. So what we are doing is whenever we are signing the email, we are using SHA-256 algorithm to calculate the hash of the email. And once the hash is calculated, it is digitally signed and appended to the signature and then it is sent over the network. When it is sent over the network and it is received or at the recipient side, every email client has this feature that they will recalculate the hash of the email and compare with the one which is appended to the signature. If they are same, that means the email was never tampered. And if they are different, that will justify that the email was already tampered. Right? That's the unique property of SHA algorithm that even if there is a slightest change in the data, it can be a full stop, it can be an additional space or comma, then the new hash or the new message digest will be completely different. So that's how we ensure the message integrity that it will be maintained if it is digitally signed. The second thing we have as endpoint authentication. Now this is another very important aspect that we want to make sure that it was that the email was actually sent by the person who he or she was claiming to be, right? So in case of endpoint authentication, since when we are sending the email and digitally signing it, we are ensuring that we are signing, uh, we are adding our signing certificate to it. So once the signing certificate is attached to it and it is received on recipient side, that will ensure that recipient can easily view who actually sent this email with the help of signing certificate. So getting into the details, they can view the uh, sender name, they can see uh, the email address of the individual, and also they will be able to view uh, uh, the organization of the employee. So that serves end-to-end -end endpoint authentication as well. And one more point that is not mentioned here is about non-repudiation. So once you have sent a digitally signed email to someone, you cannot deny that you never sent the email because signing can only happen if you have access to the private key of the certificate. That is very important aspect and you have to make sure you only have access to it. Then we have confidentiality and availability. Talking about confidentiality, since we are relying on public key encryption and we are actually encrypting the data by with, with the public key of the recipient. So once the data is received on recipient side, then only it is decrypted with the corresponding private key, which only the receiver has access to. 
So that will ensure end-to-end -end encryption, not server-to-server -server or anything. So this ensures end-to-end -end encryption with the help of PKI infrastructure. Last but not the least, everyone must be curious about availability of such emails. Now in case of availability, since these certificate are actually installed on your machine, right? So as far as you have access to your machine, we will make sure or uh, you can easily decrypt the emails or encrypted emails that you have received, right? So availability is always with you because the certificate is with you. This is good to know, Deepak. Thank you very much. You know, I am sure a lot of our guests would uh, relate to this, especially the CISOs, since it is important for them to have a solution which promotes the benefit of PKI. Exactly, Duty. Uh, so let's quickly talk about uh, SMIM encryption and signing, right? So if I talk about SMIM encryption, so as I correctly mentioned in confidentiality, that when we are uh, sending out encrypted email to someone, then it will be encrypted with the recipient's public key. So if we see in the email or in the image here, there is a sender and a receiver. So they will have a public private key pair. That's the SMIM certificate. So when sender is sending the email or signed email to the recipient, then it will be digitally signed with sender's signing certificate. When the receiver, when the sender is trying to encrypt the email, in that case, it will use the public key of the recipient to ensure it encrypt the email uh, with this public key. And due to public key infrastructure, PKI infrastructure, it will ensure that anything which is encrypted with my public key can only be decrypted with my corresponding private key and no one else across the globe. So when the dig uh, email is digitally signed, it is the signing signer certificate or the sender certificate. And when it is encrypted, it is the recipient's public key. So that will justify two things here now. The very first thing, with the certificate which is attached to signed email, recipient will be able to authenticate sender. And the second thing, only the recipient can view the email because it was encrypted with his or her public key. And only she has the access to corresponding private key. That's how this signed and encrypted email works. And I would like to demonstrate this to you, right? So it's a very quick and easy process. So we will quickly move to the uh, demo part uh, after showing you how digitally signed and encrypted email looks like, right? So if you see in this email or if you see in this slide, you see there is an email which is sent by Deepak Bajaj to DoD Aransom, right? And in this email, you see on the left hand side that it, it is it is showing the additional message that it is signed by Deepak.bajaj at globalsign.com. And there's this red ribbon icon. Right? This red ribbon icon is the visible indication that this email is digitally signed. And who signed this email? You can view the details from the uh, details of this signature. Right? From the signature itself, you can get the signing certificate. Along with that, in the second email, you can see that along with this red ribbon icon, you have this lock icon, right? This lock icon actually justifies that this email traveled as a encrypted email, right? So let's quickly have a demo where I can actually show you how this looks like, right? So I'm going to share my screen here to actually show you how this thing works. Just give me a second, please. Okay, I guess everyone's excited to see our demo, Deepak. Yeah, so I'm sharing my screen here. Please confirm once you can see my screen. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yes, yes, it, it's visible now. Perfect. So for the sake of this demo, since I have DOD with me, so I'm going to send an email to DOD Aranzo here, my colleague, and I will simply put this as test email and simply put this as test email again. So in this case, I'm doing our day to day work that you are also doing in sending the emails, right? So I'm simply adding the recipient. I put the subject of the email and I put the body of the email and simply click on send. Once I go to my send items and see the email that was actually sent, right? If I click on this email, you will see few additional things. The very first thing, this email has this attribute signed by deepak.yadav at globalsign.com. So this justifies that who actually sent the email or what email address was used to send this email. In this case, I would like to highlight one thing. 
that you must have seen few emails in the past that the name was showing someone, uh, the name was showing as your colleague or it may be your manager or CEO or CFO. However, if you click on the name and go to the details, the email address was something like abc at gmail.com, xyz yeah. at hotmail.com or something. So people tend to use this thing as well and try to do phishing attacks that the display name will be something. However, the inner email or the actual email address used was abc at gmail.com or anything, right? But in this case, you clearly see the email of the individual under the signed by attribute, so you can be sure about the email address. The second thing or the second visual indication you have is this red ribbon icon. If you hover on this red ribbon icon, it says digital signature is trusted and you can click here for details. I will click here and this will say that this is signed by this particular individual and digital signature on this message is valid and trusted. That is another point I would like to highlight that our certificates are trusted by Windows, iOS, Linux, Android, all the platforms. So no matter where you want to use the certificate, our certificates will be valid and trusted. If you click on details and you will see that there is a digital signature layer because we have digitally signed this email, right? If I click on sign up, it will actually show you the email address used. It will actually show you the algorithm which was used to sign this email. And also it will show you the date and time when this email was digitally signed. I will go into more details now and show you who the sender is, right? So once Jody has received this email, she can also view all the details by going to this red ribbon icon and she can see the certificate attached to this email. You can see here that this certificate is issued to Deepak Yadav and it is issued by Global Sign GCC R3 Personal Sign 2 CA. So that is a public and trusted CA. If you go to details and click on subject, that gives you complete information about the individual. That the email address associated is this one. That's the first name and last name of this individual. That's the organization unit I belong to. And that's my organization and location, state and country. This way you get 100% assurity that this email was actually sent by Deepak Yadav. Who Deepak Yadav is? He is an employee of GMO Global Science Certificate Services Limited and that's the location of this individual. Now you can be 100% assured or you can be, uh, you can authenticate this email that yes, this was actually sent by Deepak and it is not a phishing or a scam email. Apart from this, when I was repeatedly referring to um, email hash or message digest, so you can see the message digest attached here. So at the time of signing this email on my machine, this email hash was calculated and appended to the signature. Same is received on DOD side or on the recipient side. So as soon as this email is received on her side, every email client has the feature to recalculate the hash of the email that they have received and compare with the one which is attached to the signature here as I'm showing you. Once the comparison is successful, they are equal. That will justify that your email was never tampered and the email is delivered as it was sent. So that justifies message integrity, that justifies authenticity of the email, right? Now let's quickly move to uh, email encryption. So that was about signed email that you can send to anyone across the globe, across platforms, across domains. Now let me quickly show you how a digitally encrypted email looks like. So for this case, I'm sending another email to one of my colleague and I will explicitly select encrypt in this case because I want to uh, selectively uh, use the emails that I want to encrypt, right? So I can put the email content, I put this again here and I send this email, right? So as soon as I send this email, I go to my sent items. I will have this another email that I have sent again to my colleague Ashwini Raina. And in this case, you will see along with this red ribbon icon, which again says digital signature is trusted. It is also showing you a golden lock icon. This golden lock icon justifies that this email traveled as an encrypted email over the network. That gives me this assurance that even on the public network, if there is a successful man in middle, middle attack, if there is successful data packet capture, no, can, no one can view the content of my email. So if there is sensitive information in this email, I can be 100% assured that only Ashwini will be able to view it 
who it is meant for. If I click on details again, you will see this additional information here that along with digital signature layer, there is a encryption layer as well that justifies end to end encryption. So this email is digitally signed as well as encrypted and that's how easy it is, right? So for digitally signed email, I didn't click anything additional. I try to send the email as I'm generally sending it or you are generally sending it. In case of encrypt, when I want to selectively encrypt an email, I simply click on encrypt and send the email. So that was all from my side for the quick demo. If there are any questions, please feel free to type in the chat window. All right, thank you, thank you very much, Deepak. I I, I guess everyone is, is uh, stimulated uh, with our discussion regarding SMIME certificate, and definitely that is a very compelling demo. So basically, we just showed everyone how easy it is to digitally sign and encrypt emails. And you know, I just wanted to share this uh, quick information, Deepak, that a lot of ITs are very particular on a solution that can easily be adopted by their their users. So I guess with your demo, we have convinced them, all right, how easy it is to use SMIME certificate. So thank you very much on that. Yeah, that is right. It is very easy to use. And also, it's not about usage of the certificate only. It's about implementation as well. So we will also justify that how easy it is to implement this as well. Right. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Deepak. All right. Now I just want to discuss this. All right. This this slide. So if you notice, we're um, introducing a new word here, which is personal sign. All right. So for those who are wondering what is personal sign, basically it is Global Signs brand name for S MIME or secure email solution, and as well as for client authentication certificates. I also want to elaborate here that a personal sign certificate is a digital certificate and a lot of you may know this or not that a digital certificate is equivalent to a driver's license or passport in the digital world, right? So let's take our passports as an as our example, right? It is our ID to identify ourselves and to prove who we say we are and similarly that is the use case of a personal sign certificate in emails. And if our passports can only be issued by our particular government, then that, uh, that also applies on a personal sign certificate or any digital certificates, where only a publicly trusted certificate authority can process and issue it, like global sign. Now, I think Deepak, everyone's wondering now, how do we really deploy a SMIME certificate? Shall we move on on the next slide? Yes, please, Jody. So thank you for briefing this very well in terms of personal science certificates that we have. I quickly want to take a minute here in uh, talking about secure email solution deployment, right? So now we can imagine about our organization. Our organization might have 50, 100, 500, thousand to five thousand employees right and we by, might want to deploy the certificate for each one of the individual right so in this case we have an option in which you can bulk request the certificate and bulk deploy the certificate as well onto the end user machines so it's as simple as creating a csv file uploading the information and the recipients will receive an email and they can simply click on a link and they can install the certificate on their machine that is one way of doing it that involves a bit of manual task. But again, we do have an option in which you can completely automate the certificate installation. That will be as easy as integrating our solution, which is known as auto enrollment gateway. That will directly integrate with your Active Directory to pull the information about the users who require SMIME certificate. So it can be based on a group, it can be based on all the employees or based on different departments. So it can pull the information from Active Directory from the groups and then it can simply request certificate on its own from global sign and leveraging domain controller. It can push the certificate back to domain join machines. So the uh, de deployment of these certificates is as easy as you can imagine. And we here at global sign want to make sure that our colleagues in IT team do not follow the pain or do not face the pain of installing the certificate on thousand or machines. 
So we will help you deploy it in best possible way and easiest way. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Deepak. Now, I guess it's time for me to summarize um, S-MIME certificate, all right? Where do we comply and what are the benefits of S-MIME certificate? So basically, again, as we have mentioned, all right, S-MIME protects the email by providing encryption and integrity of the sender and email. It is also a user-friendly solution like what we have demoed earlier. And when it comes to deployment, it does not require ample effort from our ITs. We have a lot of ways to automate the provisioning of the certificates to the users and as well as to the machines. So the basic principle of SMIME is to protect organizations from the rising risks of using email, as well as ensure security on the personal and sensitive information of their company and enforce compliance of GDPR and email security requirements. So Deepak, aside from securing emails, do we still have other use cases for this kind of certificate, for personal sign certificate? Yep, there is certainly we have few more use cases that you have just put up on the screen here. So I'll be honest with you. So we are not selling a solution. We are not selling a service. So we are not selling just a certificate, but we want to give you a solution from which you can take more and more benefit out of it, right? So we just spoke about SMIME certificate and we just spoke about email signing and encryption that is actually helping you address a lot of email challenges that every organization face today. Apart from this, I would also like to highlight that these certificates are capable of capable of signing documents, which are office documents. So if I talk about office documents, something like Word or Excel files, this certificate can also sign these uh, files so as to ensure that no one can tamper the reports, right? Generally in today's scenario, what I have observed that people are sending or managers are sending reports over the email and these remote reports are in the form of Excel or Word or spreadsheet or something. So we can digitally sign these reports so as to ensure no one can tamper them. And it will also show a valid and trusted signature. If someone tries to tamper such reports, which are digitally signed using our certificate, if someone tries to tamper it, the signature will become invalidated and it will clearly say that the report has been tampered or the document has been tampered and you should not trust this document. Apart from this, it is also used to authenticate yourself to FDA. So if you uh, maybe if you belong to a pharma industry, right? If you are from pharmaceutical background, then you must be sending out your test results, your uh, drug administration or your drug reports to FDA for approval. So in such case, FDA has clearly mandated that they want to make sure who is actually submitting these reports to them. So they want to make sure that any email that you're sending to them should be digitally signed. So this is another use case that the certificate is used for. Another one very good example we have for hard drive encryption that is encrypting file system as one of the key usage. So we can enable this key usage for you in the same certificate to ensure you can actually encrypt the data on your machine, right? So that's a lot of use cases that you can do. Apart from this, a very important use case I would like to highlight is about authentication. If I talk about authentication, each one of us has worked from home during last two years, right? And each one of an, one has uh, each one of us has used VPN. In case of VPN, what we try to do is a lot of organizations try to use email address and uh, that there's a username and password to connect to the VPN services. However, few organizations had two-factor authentication implemented, and there were other organizations who had a different way of authenticating the user. With our certificate, I give you the surety that not only you can authenticate the user, you can also authenticate the device with which user is trying to connect to a network, right? So in this case, when the certificate is installed on your machine, you will make sure that as far as your VPN gateway is supporting certificate based authentication, it will look for the certificate as well to let you connect to the office network. So that will help you achieve authentication and you can do it with the help of Windows Smart Card logon, you can do it for VPNs, you can it for, do it for mobile devices. Also, you can do it for your internal applications, right? So you can make sure that if the application is supporting PKCS libraries, if the application is supporting uh, uh, certificate-based authentication, you can make sure 
that your applications are dual secured, not only with the username password, but with the help of certificate as well. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Deepak. You know, I just wanted to share that over the course of time that I've been in discussion with an, uh, like, you know, IT managers or CTOs or CISOs, they are not only concerned about the security and compliance, they are also concerned with the cost effectiveness of a solution. And just like what you have discussed, Deepak, uh, we can conclude that our personal sign certificate is a multi-purpose solution which makes it cost effective and efficient for any organizations. Exactly, Judy. So this is one certificate which is actually helping you in multiple use cases. Correct. I agree with you. So I guess we can discuss um, who are the key sectors or who should use email security or who should use personal sign certificate, regardless if it's if it's for usage of authentication and um, other use cases that we have discussed earlier. All right. So again, there is no small or big enterprises that are safe from any email exploits. Everyone is using email as a day to day business communication in our daily operation. And more than ever, everyone needs an email security because of the rising threats and risk of using email. So regardless if your company is from a government agencies, um, else more that you are conversing with a lot of your citizens or, or uh, like, you know, nationals of your government. So it's very important to secure your email security and a lot of top secret or sensitive information are being exchanged as well in interagency. Um, it could also be like, you know, a telecom an e-commerce, a banking and finance sector where a lot of our money is basically um, at their um, a fortress, you know what I mean? And as well as for mind healthcare information where they uh, where they process our personal health information. So again, just to um, summarize and highlight it, everyone needs an email security solution regardless of your sector or your industry. So I guess that's a wrap, Deepak. All right, um, in our webinar, maybe we can move on with some Q&A. I believe there are a lot of questions in our chat box. Should we address their questions now? Perfect, Judy. I really thank our joiners who have stayed with us despite we have closed the time limit. I really apologize for that, but it was really nice talking to you today. And let's quickly take the questions that we have from our uh, attendees. Thank you. OK, perfect. Let me just um, stop this screen sharing and try to read some of the questions from our attendees, all right? Okay, so I have a few questions here, Deepak, from our attendees. So for example, um, JP asked this one, Deepak, why the emails we received from Google or Facebook are still not signed and or uh, sorry, and all the same with emails from banks. OK, so Google and Facebook are still not sending out signed emails because they are using generic emailers, right? They are using different platforms that is sending these automated emails. You will never receive a personalized email from Google or Facebook. Right, they are generally sending you out uh, emails from application, right, which might not be supporting as well at the moment. And these emails are never confidential emails. It is just updating you maybe uh, that uh, these are the recent posts, these are the new photos upload from your colleagues or something, right? However, if we talk about email infrastructure on Google and Facebook side, Google itself have implemented SMI in their Gmail enterprise suite, right? So you must have heard of G Suite that is already supporting as mine. So right. everyone is using the uh, email security for the official use. However, the generic emails that we receive from them are not digitally signed. Again, for the same reason that they are not confidential or not containing the sensitive data, kind of that approach to Apple. Mm -hmm. Correct, I agree. Thank you very much. Second question, um, Deepak. Will email signing and encryption work if we send it from a mobile device, that's a good question. Will it work from a mobile device? Yeah, that is actually a very nice question and I would like to thank the guest here. The thing mm -hmm. is, each one of us is using different platforms for accessing our email, right? It's not limited to our office provided laptop. 
we are actually using our mobile phones to access the emails. And yes, Android and iOS, both of them do support a SMIPE certificate and it can be easily configured so you can send and receive encrypted emails and digitally sign emails as well. Okay, that's that's a good one. And then I, I guess this would be similar. Um, Muragan also ask a question. Can we also do that in office.com or I, I, I believe this would be a Outlook web probably or web based email applications. Yes, web based email applications do support this as well. Once again, mm -hmm. then I will set two, uh, three examples and a way, right? So Google Suite and Zimbra, there are two email mm -hmm. platforms that directly support this uh, through email web, right? So there is a possibility that on your G Suite account, you directly configure your SMM certificate and you do not have to do anything additional. Same goes with Zimbra. You can directly configure your SMM certificate on your account and no matter where you're accessing it from, the emails will go digitally signed and encrypted. Apart from this, if you talk about uh, a platform like Google uh, Outlook, mm -hmm. right? So we do access our emails outlook.office.com, right? In this case, this does not provide you the option to host the certificate on the account itself. Mm -hmm. However, still there is this possibility that you can enable SMIME extension on your browser and then you can import the certificate to ensure you can send out digitally signed and encrypted emails. So yes, it is possible. Okay, perfect. Now, another question from Rupal. How can we deploy, um, sorry, or can it be deployed or can it be done for 500 users? I will say it can be done for five users, 50 mm -hmm. users, 500. I even five have a customer who has 1,000 email, <laughs> email users, so yes. Yes. Yes, even if it is for 1000 or 5000 or 50,000, mm -hmm. it is completely possible. And I believe you must be focusing about automation in this case because it's not easy to deploy on 500,000 or 1500 users. So yes, we have different options to automate the certificate issuance as well as installation. Mm -hmm. OK, perfect. Um, also from Samar, is there any limits to the amount of emails that can be signed? No, that's again one of the beauty of this solution that no matter if you are sending 50 emails in a month or if you are sending 50,000 emails in a month, you can digitally sign n number of emails and we are not going to prevent it any day. The reason being you already have the access to private key as well as the signing certificate. So it's completely up to you how many emails you want to sign. Perfect, perfect. So I guess um, that's it from the questions from our attendees. But if you still have any questions, please feel free to leave a message on the chat box so that we can address them. Or um, yeah, just to confirm, are, are there any un unanswered questions? I guess our colleague Nayan Singh has been helping us on addressing customer concerns, right? Or I, I mean, addressing customer questions regarding email security. So thank you as well, um, Nayan and other colleagues who has been supporting us, right? So yeah, I, I think that's it. Um, we're good for today, Deepak. Do you have anything to, to add before we end this webinar? Yeah, so I just saw this uh, another question in chat window from Mr. JP. And okay. I really thank for coming back on this one that uh -huh. uh, we just discussed about uh, explanation on Facebook, Google and Bank. However, why would impersonator not ask for sensitive information from potential victims such as bank customers? OK, so in this case, it's uh, OK. There is this bank and there is this receiver, right? So the customers has to understand these uh, PKI certificates has to understand digitally signed email, right? So people are accepting this day by day. It has started with the enterprises and with bank as well. Or most of the banks have already implemented it. We have few banks as our customer who have already implemented SMAP certificates. So they are generally doing it for their information that the bank representative is sending to the customer. But for the auto generated emails, something like statements or uh, something like offers, they are not digitally signing such emails. Again, I completely agree to you why impersonator don't ask for sensitive information from victims. Yes, impersonator may ask for sensitive information 
from the victims or from the bank customers, right? However, it is the responsibility of the recipient to identify if they have received it from the right source or not. With our SMAM certificate, we are trying to give you more and more help. We are trying to uh, help you uh, or we are trying to help recipients to identify if the email is legitimate or not. Once the client or once the customers accept or once the customer knows that they tend to receive digitally signed information or digitally signed emails from bank, then in such cases, if impersonator is trying to send the email, they won't be able to digitally sign it because impersonator is never going to identify himself or herself for the sake of a certificate because that will help him get caught, right? So once people start using email signing certificates and they are sure that it is digitally signed, they can be assured it is coming from the right source. If not, and they are habitual of receiving signed emails, they can be clearly susceptible about such emails. I hope that uh, briefs the question or that gives you an answer. Yes, I, I believe so, Deepak. Everyone's satisfied with this webinar. OK, there, there is another question if you could just answer that, Deepak. Impersonator can impersonate mm -hmm. auto reply system email as well, such as 2FA, OTP code. But if we, if we talk about 2FA or OTP code, then only the real OTP can actually help you connect to the system. If you are changing the OTP, it's not going to help in any case. Right? However, again, as I mentioned, that they, the banks and the big giants are already using a small certificates. But again, they are using it for the employees communication, not for the auto generated communication. That's for real. And that is because of the s adoptability onto such systems which are generating these auto emailers. Most of the companies are already working on this that if they are defining or if they are generating a bulk emailer system that they are already adding s functionality to it. But I completely agree. There is still a question and that I will also try to address more and I will research a bit more and probably uh, you will get our contact details right towards the end of the slide and we mm -hmm. will be happy to get in touch with you. Definitely, we, we should have another session for our guest, especially with uh, Mr. JP, who has been very active, has shown a lot of interest regarding SMIME certificate. So, um, you know, we appreciate um, guests who ask us questions, right? Because it gives us the opportunity as well to prove our solution to them. So thank you very much. Now, just before we end this webinar, I'll be sharing again quickly my screen just to share with you um, the contact information that you may um, address or you may like, you know, um, reach out to after this webinar so we have sales-in at globalsign.com for india we also have sales-ae at globalsign.com for middle east customers so for those who have already an existing dedicated account managers i highly recommend you to please reach out to them they would be happy to provide you an additional presentation and as well as poc for s mime certificate and for those who are new here in global sign um, we'll be reaching out to you as well but please feel free to um, also send us an email or give us a call so the contact information is available on the screen please feel free to capture it and save it as well we look forward on connecting with you once again and discuss further about email security solution i hope everyone enjoyed this webinar because i i believe both me and deepak enjoyed this webinar too right Yes, Jordi, certainly. I really enjoyed this webinar and I want to thank each one of the attendee uh -huh. for their uh, uh, for joining this session and staying with us for this long. Thank you, everyone, and uh, we really appreciate your uh, patience. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.